There are times when we have no choice but to blindly trust other people are doing their jobs, one that can and should be protecting us and those we love. Perhaps no greater amount of trust than when we fly a commercial air carrier, being checked, double-checked, wanded, and perhaps even frisked by those who have one job, just one, stop the killers from turning my flight into a tragedy. What happened recently on board a Turkish airliner has many people wondering if it could happen here, a bomb slipping past security and then tucked into the seat next to ours after having been examined by those who supposedly know what they're looking for. Let's welcome back the chairman of the Subcommittee on Transportation and Public Assets and member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Florida Republican Congressman John Micah. Congressman, always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you and at least hopefully put some people's fears to rest here. Because now we have authorities in Somalia releasing a video showing a passenger being given a laptop they say contained a bomb. Apparently it came from somebody at the security checkpoint. And they've also got 20 people arrested in connection with this incident. What kind of a red flag should this be for us here in America? Or is it just the fact that they don't do checks as well as we do in other countries? Well, unfortunately, um, in fact, most recently we conducted an oversight hearing, and we found that uh, through our inspector general uh, that uh, TSA, which is supposed to be vetting our airport workers and even their own employees, uh, has, uh, has failed in their responsibility. So this uh, highlights the attention that we should, uh, should focus on some of the people that have access to secure areas. Do you fear that something like what happened to the Turkish airliner is, I hate to say this, and I'm not trying to be overly, overly uh, dangerous here, but is this inevitable, that it's going to happen here sooner or later with so many holes in the TSA? Well, it can. Uh, we, uh, again, uh, are trying to hold them accountable. Uh, we had a report of uh, them uh, finding in a sampling 73 people who were on either a terrorist or one of the watch lists uh, being uh, uh, employed uh, at the airports. Uh, we also have huge lacks in uh, credentials. Uh, we have people working uh, with, uh, with green cards at some of the uh, airports, um, and we don't have all of the information about those in individuals. Another deficit, uh, some of those uh, uh, previously foreign nationals uh, working in the U.S. at airports uh, in sensitive capacities. Congressman, so, if I can interrupt uh, you for a it, moment it, here. It's something we've... that demands a, a, a lot more attention, I believe, in the United States. Okay, there's the point there, more attention. What is keeping you, others, whomever, from digging into this, from hearing these things, also hearing that more than 1,300 badges, 165 firearms, and 600 cell phones were lost or stolen by oh, the TSA. Also, that was also brought up at the hearing. Well, what, what, uh, what is TSA stopping you from getting right into this right now and doing something some about it? Their resources. They have over 3,300 uh, behavior detection officers, and they've never been uh, had one success with that program. They spend... Uh, half a billion dollars on it. I think it's better to, uh, to uh, adjust some of our resources where the risk is. And we've certainly seen from uh, the experience in Somalia, uh, the Russian uh, in, uh, plane that was taken down, we think that was an inside job. And again, uh, the, pro the ability of people to get behind the secure areas uh, with uh, uh, explosives or damaging uh, capabilities uh, exist. So we've got to do a much better job, reallocate our resources. Do we not need to start from a simple idea that for all intents and purposes, the TSA is just an abject failure that needs to be completely wiped out and replaced with something else? Well, I would, uh, I would agree with that statement. I helped create it. It was never intended to have. Now, listen to this. They have 46,000 screeners and 55,000 employees. They have about 9,000 administrative people. There's another resource, 4,000 of them in just Washington, D.C., making on average $103,000. So it's not like we aren't spending money or putting personnel in uh, into the mix. Um, it's how you utilize those resources and how we address the risk. And I think uh, we're at risk 
with some of the people who aren't being properly vetted. 15 seconds. People get on a plane today in America. Should they worry about their safety? Well, your chances are very slim, fortunately, but we've got to do a better job. Which then tells me in many ways people do still need to be very concerned about what happens when they step on a plane. Congressman John Micah, it's always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. Thanks so much. Now, let me go ahead and ask the people who are watching right now. When you get on a plane, do you feel safe? Do you feel that the people who are standing there watching and trying to find the next band of terrorists are actually doing a job and you feel completely safe when you get on board that aircraft? Send it to us. Email, Facebook, Twitter. Let us know what you think. Let's send a message to this government and so many others. They need to get something done now. Stay with us. The Hardline will continue.